three continents, 12 time zones, 82 countries, 5.4 billion people, 76% of the world's population. Seven of the world's 10 most populated countries are here, with China, India and Indonesia in the top four. New wealth is making its mark here, with the rate of wealth expansion projected at 30% in 2013 to 55% in 2020. This emerging wealth will see significant increases in spending power in Asia, Oceania, Africa, the fastest growing consumer food services market in the world, where diversities offer exciting opportunities for cutting-edge strategies, where extreme dichotomies open doors within one country or within the region. Considering these dichotomies, we first look at demographics. In Japan, 50% of the population is 55 years and above, making it the third oldest nation in the world. Compared to Africa, with 60% of the population below 25 years, making it the youngest continent in the world. On the extremes in economics, there's China, the world's second largest economy, enjoying a continued strong growth of 7.5% GDP. Then there's Japan, the world's third largest economy at a stagnated growth of 1.4% GDP for the past three years. These disparities span the entire region. The world's richest countries are found here, like Qatar and Singapore, with the highest GDP per capita and the world's poorest, like Pakistan and Africa, where one in three lives below UN poverty line of less than two US dollars a day. These realities are made more challenging by political unrest that confronts business operators in the region. The Arab Spring uprising in Egypt, uprisings in Turkey and a coup in Thailand left these countries with significant currency devaluation. While Indonesia, the world's largest Muslim democratic country with 200 million Muslims, enjoys relative political stability that drives a strong 5.4% GDP. The different styles of government also have an impact on issues like quality. Japan, which enforces the strictest regulations to ensure the highest quality in food products and China, where various scandal and food safety issues led to strict regulations for the importation and sourcing of raw materials. Different interpretations of NHW have added to the complexities. In some countries, big size equals strength in men and beauty in women. In Saudi Arabia, obesity now affects one in three adults. NHW is a luxury in some countries and 9 out of 10 of those suffering from chronic hunger are found in AOA. Interpreting NHW through freshness in AOA means fresh from the market or farm. While our customers recognize the relevance of NHW, it is not always commercially viable and they do not always act consistently in this direction. In out-of-home spend, a developed food services market like Japan has high out-of-home spend of seven US dollars per day, high spending power at chained stores, a well-structured system, a technology-savvy population, and efficient transportation. A developing market like the Philippines has low out-of-home spend of 32 cents per day, low spending power at chained stores, a chaotic delivery system, low income, random vendors, and poor transportation. The same opposing patterns can be seen in consumer spend. Japan's consumer spend through chained stores is 47%, compared to Indonesia's 8%. In countries with a lower income base, consumer spend is mostly through street channels, like India, at 49%, compared to Australia's 12%. New technology is opening up cashless channels for consumer spend. In China, three out of four pay with credit card as their most preferred payment vehicle for daily spending. 
digital media is becoming increasingly prominent at both personal and business levels. 50% of global internet users are found in AOA, with the Philippines, Thailand and Malaysia in the top 15 countries. A region of high social media engagement, with 370 million active Facebook users in Asia over 10 years and 400 million active WeChat users in China within three years. Digital technology is so important that in India, 55% of the population use cell phones, compared to 31% who have access to proper toilet facilities. Moving on to religion, where diverse compositions demand specific diet requirements. 10% are Buddhists who observe a largely vegetarian and non-beef diet. 19% are Hindus who follow a strictly non-beef diet and 30% are Muslims who consume 100% halal food. These three groups are dominant in 59% of the population, observing some level of religious dietary restrictions. As for halal, there are more than 400 halal certifying bodies, and not all are recognized. Asia, Oceania, Africa. Here's where diversities challenge our capabilities where dichotomies open doors to tremendous opportunities. We have to adapt, be fast and flexible. Here is where we will continue to win. <laughs>